Hello everyone. I am Sudhi back again with another session on Coin Gabber. And today we are joined by Dave from uh, Fortified X. Hi Dave. How are you? Hi Sudhi. Um, thank you for inviting me to uh, this chat um, show. Um, yeah, we're going to be exploring uh, what crypto entails, what we are, how this and the space has evolved, security concerns, regulatory concerns. And to see where we are at, to see where we are, and to see where crypto is going to. Um, Fortified X has a lot under its leaves, which we believe um, when we introduce um, the audience, will welcome it because we are here to revolutionize the space. We are a hybrid cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency exchange um, set to redefine the modus of centralized and decentralized crypto exchange operation. Our mission is to um, ensure crypto is adopted worldwide. And, you know, we can only start from a place, and let's say we're starting here um, from how far crypto have come. We will continue from here to see how we can push for that for that decentralization of crypto in the world. So, uh, Dave, that brings to the first talk of topic of discussion. Market is going good. I mean, everything is going good, although there are certain setbacks like we had in the last week itself. But these are these are not uh, these are just the fluctuations. We cannot call them dips, I must say. And uh, how do you see the market going from here? If we talk about crypto in particular, then let us say by December 25, uh, how do you see the market growing? Or let us say uh, target a short term December 24. What okay. is going to be the market like uh, for the crypto assets? If we talk about the pricing only. Um, crypto, I think, um, given the way crypto has evolved to now, especially now in this year in particular, um, there's been many positive changes. You know, crypto, crypto has evolved in a positive way. Um, you know, regulation has come to play. There's been more acceptance when it comes to crypto and that you can see why. And there's been positive development in crypto. Um, you can see this year has provided some promising charts for crypto and the way I see I think this positive development will carry on in the same day. So crypto will continue with a positive strength. And then um, because it's going to continue a, with a positive strength, and um, crypto will keep um, you know evolving and we keep improving. And come December, um, I think um crypto will be more consolidated in the sense that we we're gonna have more crypto boom from our own perspective and that to carry on even in 2025. So that's my perspective about crypto as we speak. So if I, I mean, I'm, I might be putting you in a fix by asking, but what do you see the, the godfather of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin? What will be the level of Bitcoin by December 24? Um, well, I see Bitcoin improving from where it is. I know it's been going back and forth. It's been running between the plus 70 and you know 60 and under six under 70 so i think crypto is likely to stabilize in the 70 range so if, if crypto stabilizes in the in the 70 range uh, by the 70 dollar range by the end of the year i think it is a good thing because it's going to set the framework for further increment in the coming year that's great. So if we talk about the industry in general, we both move around the industry. Uh, one thing, Bitcoin is one part of the industry, we say. It. But the rest of the industry is driven by so many other projects. There are so many builders developing different things. So I would categorize the builders into two categories. One, which is building directly on the crypto assets. And the other builders, which are developing the, the platform for crypto assets to be uh, operated or traded, like the exchanges and things. Yes. So how is the general sentiment in the market right now? Are people still waiting and watching to put their hands into crypto or they have started actually coming aggressively into the market and to start building and trading crypto? But what is your uh, take on this? Yeah, um, from what I've seen so far, um, I could say AI has redefined the crypto space in a certain way. And there's been a wider exception and uh, acceptance for, for crypto from the AI um, point of view, um, because it, well, AI is building in crypto, building in blockchain. So um, that has um, redefined the way people accept um, crypto. That simply tells us that 
blockchain can be applied to a range of things and which you know ai you know has, has actually proved itself in that respect and you know a lot of things have been built on the blockchain and that tells us that the technology that blockchain offers is vast so because that technology is vast i think building is going to continue and because building is going to continue um you will see more projects coming up and that 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 brings forth that bring forth different ideas and those ideas would lead to the, to the development of more crypto projects that eventually all these projects will get listed on, on exchanges so when these projects get listed on exchanges you know it you know increases exchange operation so i i see generally building and exchange operations we head in a positive direction so i'd say it's positive um and it's a good thing for crypto because um it's not only limited to just the um, financial part of it as you know the normal DeFi but it's come into a more innovative sphere of technological development, which I think is good because that redefines, um, it, it means we cannot put a limit to the extent to which blockchain technology can get. So you, uh, I mean, just on the contrary, if we talk about then uh, in the crypto world, there are two kinds of players, the good ones and the bad ones. So, uh, although I think by the last downfall or the crash of FTX and then the sudden downfall of crypto world, we all have understood how to identify the good from the bad ones, but there are still a number of projects running in the market. I mean, as people generally say that the three categories in the cryptos, crypto assets are Bitcoin, altcoin and shitcoins. So, <laughs> so if you just uh, forget the uh, Bitcoin and altcoin, so how do you categorize the third uh, segment? And how do you see uh, people's reaction towards that? Because two things are for sure. One is, if you want to make real money, it is a third category where you can actually yeah. make quick money. But when we talk about the other things like being a stable market development or a stable market lookout, then actually it is not just the uh, first two things. The third ones give the maximum option and people like to take risk. Yeah. So uh, as a person from exchange, what is your opinion about this different categorization and how are people approaching these assets? I mean, since you belong to an exchange, so you would know better about the kind of volumes that these assets are generating and I mean, different categories of assets are generating and how are people approaching this? Are they uh, relying, still relying on sentiments or have they actually started researching and about the use cases of the products? Um, from my perspective, I think uh, when it uh, comes to crypto projects, the first thing I would advise anybody to do is always do your own research. You know, when I say do your own research, it means you wouldn't necessarily go by sentiments. You have to, you know, go by your judgment. Look at the indicators that determines if a project is a viable project or not. You can look at volumes at times. Some some some, some project can fake volumes, but when you look at um, the indicators, certain projects are always tested by time. So uh, a project that is promising you short returns, short-term returns, you possibly know they are just they're just lying. You know, when it comes to building a project, a project is not short-term. A, a project has to be viable. They know to have the product that they intend to offer, and you see the, that the builders are actually working to deliver these products. So any project that is not delivering the product that they offer, any project that is promising you short-term profit, well, I would say be wary of them. But most importantly. Do your research. And you could always tell if a project is credible by their volumes, by their transaction volumes. You could you, you could see their transaction volumes. Let's say a project say they launch today and in the next few hours or in the next month, they've got no volume to show for it. So you could tell there's something wrong with that project. There's something wrong with that product. So a project that is able to stand the test of time, you know, that project is a viable project. But most importantly, I would always recommend that you do your own research before you get in, involved in any project because that is the safest side to stand on to evaluate a project. Well, one thing particularly, Dave, you work, I mean, you are an exchange. Yeah. So when we talk about exchange, recently the trading volumes have increased a lot. Yeah. And I have seen a few exchanges crashing uh, in on their tech and yeah. they could not handle the volumes and the, the uh, sudden upsurge of the transitions that came. So how have you been building on the technology part? Or rather, let us say, uh, let us uh, discuss about this thing that 
the volume increase how has it affected you in terms of technology um the, the what the one thing we, we must look into when it comes to volume increase you know certain exchange the the fake volumes you know when they fake volumes they only just you know pushing sentiments to deceive people so um if if an exchange is faking volume or is producing unnecessary hype then you, you need to be worried about that exchange if you look at binance binance does not produce hype you know binance is a quality exchange so you could see it does not produce any crazy hype but we, you can you can check from this record you, you can check from binance um, history that it's always been on the credible side he's always there to deliver um what he says he wants to deliver and then um, and then um, there, there are certain exchanges that deal in malicious you know stuff like price manipulation and all of those stuff they they have um, other parties that they deal with that 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 at the end of the day they could um mislead investors so um it's good to be able for individuals to be able to go and take deep study on this for themselves so that they can understand when an exchange is manipulating their price and manipulating their volumes and a state that does that definitely they should be wary of those exchanges because like you know anything can happen wherever there is no trust wherever there is deceit it is not recommended for anybody to go there and be involved in. so people should be wary in with any exchange that you know cover up stuff that are not sincere you know that that, that does not allow the the the, the public know the sincerity of their operations and the sincerity of the transaction that they see they carry out and then when it comes to that um it's best for people to you know exercise caution and only you know deal with credible exchanges when you deal with credible exchanges you know they've got your interests at hand they are not doing it for their own self gain or for their own personal gain they are doing it because they enjoy doing that business and they want to deliver for the users at deal so when the market uh, came up and uh, you have come up with this exchange just uh, let our viewers know what exactly is uh, fortified x about and how uh, your solutions are providing a better outcome when especially when dealing with the crypto trading yeah um fortified x is a hybrid it's a hybrid cryptocurrency exchange um this was um conceived with the idea to combine um the features of a centralized exchange with a decentralized exchange in order to de to deliver a hybrid exchange that can provide better a better user experience um we know um there are a lot of issues that has plagued centralized exchanges uh we understand that one of the key issues that has plagued centralized exchanges is the issue of um financial hacks there's been a lot of um hacks on centralized exchanges and this primarily because of the wallets of the users that are online and also with decentralized with decentralized exchanges we know this is not managed by anybody and i uh, understand the security of decentralized exchanges but the only drawback decentralized exchanges have is, is the issue of scalability um the issue of um the the issue of lack of liquidity and they have some other issues which impacts um, centralized exchanges and then um, which is another issue is speed and um, but with hybrid exchange it aims to you know combine the features of decentralized and centralized to deliver um the security and the convenience the, the to deliver the ease and convenience of a centralized exchange as well as the privacy and security of decentralized decentralized exchange but we and that's why we decided to take this part called the hybrid exchange and then um, one of our key focus is security we know um through security issues there's been massive loss of funds in exchanges and we want to bridge this gap to ensure this does not repeat itself so part of the features that we intend to provide through fortified x is um cold storage for deposit so this cold storage is like a board that keeps um funds offline and we are we are only able to provide um funds for transactions limited funds for transactions so in this in this light that simply means the cold storage that holds the bulk of the fund won't be it's not accessible to hackers or any of of any malicious player that could hack the system and with the wallet online which is going to be a multi signature hot wallet that was going to provide you know it's going to require 
multiple um, signatures for you to be able to access it. So um, with limited funds available in, um, how would I call it, in, in customers' wallet, um, hackers will not be able to proceed to do their dust that they have because and the hot wallet is secured with multi-signature access and the cold storage is, is offline, providing an overall protection for any security breach. Besides that security breach, we, we intend to develop this exchange based on a custom design. When I mean a custom design, we, we want to ensure it's robust and it delivers what it says, as opposed to a white label. You know, a, a white label is good, but it has its limitation. Um, there could be error in the source code. There could be security vulnerabilities that could make the exchange vulnerable to hack. So Fortified X is going based on a custom design to ensure it, dissolve, it delivers the right technical ar architecture to ensure maximum security. We are also looking at exploiting um, the use of a security outguard, like an AI-powered security outguard that is going to ensure um, real-time real threat detection. So whenever there's any act of security breach, we are notified and we're able to rapidly respond on time prevent any system breach from happening. So those are the security features we tend to provide, and that is what we want to work on. That's great. I mean, a lot of features uh, fortified. If I say you justify the name very well, <laughs> it is quite <laughs> secure yeah. using a number of factors, number of features, a hybrid of decentralized and centralized. But uh, I mean, Dave, uh, I want to ask the, the story behind the curtain. So, with every uh, idea, with every project, there's a thought process that is behind the, the that is, I mean, uh, utilized for the working on the project in a particular direction. So okay. what led you to design this project? What problem exactly did you fa face in the crypto world that you thought of making such a product which will help ease out certain more problems from the crypto users? And how, how you thought of it? I mean, the story, that is what I want to understand. All right. Um, the story came about, um, I'll say, I thought about it sometime in the middle of last year. But prior to me conceptualizing that idea, I'd had my own bad experience in crypto. Um, there was a time, you know, I had some issue. My, my wallet was hacked <laughs> and my phone was stolen. I wasn't quite happy because I haven't tried to recover the fund and there was no way I could recover the fund. I tried every to try to report the case and you know I got no response from anyway. I was feeling bad because of um, you know, how could this just happen just like that and nothing could be done to to you know to to secure um to, to reverse the situation. This the situation could not be reversed and the hacker, you know, just did whatever they wanted to do and it's still the fund that I had. Um yeah, I was not happy about it. So I thought about it and I said, okay, I've, although I've not just the thought of an exchange in the past or building an exchange that would be credible and more viable, but I thought about it and, and I looked about the security issues that are that had plagued the crypto space. I thought about my own experience. And also while I was um, doing an MBA study, I did an MBA study uh, a few years ago. And one of the projects I worked on was, was um, AWS security challenge. I understand the, I understood why um, the S3 bucket of AWS became vulnerable. So there were some security vulnerabilities that that, that led to um, breaches for those using the Amazon service. And why did that happen? It was because of the S3 bucket of the Amazon system was vulnerable. So I looked at that. And um, because the service is going to be online, it is important that uh, security is taken to the top. So with that in mind, um, the, with the idea of exchange I had, I, I, I wanted to ensure that this exchange is safe enough to ensure um, users' confidence. So the goal of this exchange is first, to ensure users' confidence. If the, if the exchange is secure enough and robust enough, to deliver its security requirement, then we know our users will be happy to continue doing business with us. If you look at since the FT4 
it wasn't because of um, security vulnerabilities. Since the FT4, you can see, and there have been more um, users that have flocked to Binance and because of um, credibility. So when security is at the top of the chain, we know there is credibility. And so we want to stand up on the side of credibility because we want to um, deliver what we say. I want to ensure um, investors' confidence and users' confidence on Fortified X. That's a great thought, Dave, I, I must say. And uh, I mean, in when we were talking, there are a few questions coming. So Cyril is asking, can you elaborate on the project's revenue model? And can you provide insights onto the revenue distribution among different sources outlined in the revenue model? Uh, I think it is uh, a bit more uh, private question as far as the project it is, is concerned. It is so a I'll, question. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll put it to you whether you want to answer it or not. I will leave it to you. Um, well, well, Look, the, I, I, um, I'll be very clear, Dave, that uh, there are a lot of people looking uh, up to your project, right? So yeah. they have some faith and trust in you. So, I mean, this question might be an outcome of a, a thought process that whether Fortified X is going to sustain in the long run or not. So, yeah. I mean, you can you um, can at least tell them a brief about things. <laughs> okay. Um, the brief about things are, our, our revenue model is, um, well, we're going to have fees that we charge for transaction. We're going to have fees that we charge for, for listing. And um, obviously, we're going to party with um, market makers to ensure our exchange have liquidity. But overall, um, our key revenue model would be powered by the 45X token. So the 45X token, which is the FASAX the token, will power our ecosystem. We have a range of products that we intend to offer, that we intend to offer. But I would recommend that that individual go read our white paper to see the range of products that we intend to offer. So from this product, we intend to generate revenue to sustain our operation to carry on as a business. Dave, that's good, Dave. So that is that is just one question from one of the uh, viewers on the program. And uh, another question that I want to ask is that how uh, uh, say I mean get my question clearly. How much are you invested into the future of the crypto industry? I mean, Fortified X is one project, but yeah. how do you think? How positive are you? With the future of this industry, let us say in the times to come, if we talk about say five years from now, how do you see industry growing? And uh, how do you see the industry coming up and becoming a routine part of the investment portfolio of people? I mean, right now what people are doing is that 20% uh, of their uh, investment they do in crypto because they feel that it is not that secured. It might someday yeah. vanish and we become zero. So oh. how, what is what is your feeling about it as to how users will take it in the times to come? Um, I understand the um, user's perspective because of um, the volatility of the market or the, vo the volatility of crypto. Um, but I'll put it this way. Um, that's why it's important to have a range of product. When people rely only on token, you know, and there are no use cases, then it becomes a problem. So our, our key aspect is our use case. We have a range of use cases you know, that is beneficial for, for our users and for Fortified X as a project. So we want to focus on our use cases, build on our use cases, and that use cases that we're going to be focusing on building is what to bring value to the Fortified X token. And then we also have um, some plans to burn some Fortified X token in the end to increase the value of the token. But like I said, the, the key element to be the use case. The more value this use case generates, the more value, the, the the more value it will be for the fortified X token. So in the long run, in five years time, well, we hope we hope to have had, um, you know, a consolidated base of um, product. Our, our product should be more viable and more real, and people could see um, the value it has delivered to everyone and to um, the native token itself. Just as Binance started from where it was today, and you can see the value of Binance token, you know, you know, you have confidence in the Binance token because it has evolved over time because of the use case it provides. Same as we follow in that fight. And uh, are there going to be some new products uh, with the 45 Yes, yes. And... the products will keep evolving. You know, um, 
we, we, we're going to keep researching on what product will actually be beneficial to the public. So yes, that's why at some point um, we're going to be delivering um, the Fortified X lab. So that will help us do deep research and see what we can do to bring in more products to the market. Okay, that's great. So just, just in general, if we talk about, I mean, uh, people are interested in the crypto industry, the scenario is growing, things are growing, and uh, a lot of people are looking forward to your project. So when I was going through your website, I saw a particular thing that uh, not just the trading part, but there are a lot of financial services also, like which we can say the DeFi swap, the fiat yeah. wallet. 45x credit card also 45x pay you mentioned yeah. and of yeah. course asset tokenization for businesses to raise funds so how yeah. are these services coming up and how have you planned to take these services forward yeah you know some of these services will not be um, unraveled at launch some of the services will um will be launched at some point in our journey like asset tokenization when we launch in october or uh, yes around October or so, uh, we're not going to have asset tokenization on our, our, on our, our product portfolio to be live. Yeah, all of these are going to be um, launched gradually. So that is our plan. We're not going to launch all the project out in one go because we, not, we, we need to make sure those products are actually ready to go um, for our users. So that is the plan. So we're working on coming in gradually and we're going to deliver those products gradually to ensure they fulfill the requirement that is required from the industry and to work with the right partners to deliver what we say we want to um, deliver. So um, it's going to be a gradual process. But this product is what we have on our on our plate. I will intend to deliver them in the long run. So Dave, uh, one thing about the project again, uh, this uh, credit card and especially the asset tokenization, these are the two things which I'm very interested in knowing. Uh, I'll tell you why. Because the, the boon for any financial industry right from the basic starts with what much value can you deliver in the Web3, Web2 world. Yeah. So when we are talking about the asset tokenization, uh, are we particularly talking about the Web2 assets or the Web3 assets? First question. Second is, uh, how are crypto uh, coins or crypt uh, crypto cards going to deliver the value? Because it is a very, very volatile market. Yeah. So how do these cards deliver value? Since you have already made the product, I thought you would be the right person to answer. Because let us say today Bitcoin is $70,000. Tomorrow yeah. it is going to be like $75,000. Yeah. So how do you manage that kind of thing in a credit card transaction? Because I have been with the banking side also. So okay. I understand few basics, but I'm uh, like will trying to uh, locate or relate these two worlds together. Yeah. So the, the aim is to, um, for those um, transactions, um, those products. The aim is to use only stable coins to deliver them. But we won't use a coin that is volatile to deliver them. We want to use the stable um, cryptocurrencies to deliver um, these items. That's going to be um, for the credit card and for the asset tokenization. Whoever wants to um, access any of this product, they have to come through to access it through stable currency. So they have to if they must come to the platform, they have to um, purchase some FASDAX token, convert to um, um, for t to um, stable currency, and from there, they will be able to access those products. So they can only be delivered via the use of stable currencies. That's great. That's great. So one more question, again, coming from Cyril. How do you explain, uh, could you explain how the DAO governance framework implemented by Fortified X works? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, can you explain how the DAO governance framework implemented by Fortified X? How does yeah, that work? Yeah, DAO, the, the DAO framework aims to bring um, users or all the, 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 the Fortified X community into making decisions um, so that it, it, would, it wouldn't just be um, the operators making decisions. So we want, it allows everybody to participate. So that gives everybody, um, there will be voting rights. People will be able to vote for the kind of project that we can launch. Let's say the launch pad. We can speak to the community and provide a particular project and say, oh, this is the project we are looking at. We want to launch this project on our launch pad. What do they think about it? Then the community will have to you know, vote. And when they vote about 
it, then we decide whether we launch that particular um, project. And when it comes to certain um, decisions that we want to make, yeah, we could have the community involved in it. Um, because at the end of the day, um, when we have a joint effort, then we believe we can make um, a more positive decision and that benefits everyone. So the aim is for a joint effort to make positive decisions that benefits everyone in the world. That's great. Thank you so much, Dave, for the answering the question. So now uh, coming towards the, the concluding uh, discussion of what we have been having as a good topic, uh, where do you see Fortified X going from here? I mean, what, what is the future like? Mm -hmm. And uh, if somebody wants to invest with Fortified X, do you have a token? And how can people actually go and ride the boat with you in this journey? Because it, your project seems like a unique one, a different project in many respects, solving a lot of problems, and people definitely would like to work with you, to invest with you. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is, um, like now, the ICO is running. And um, yeah, the journey starts here. And the journey starts with we getting support um, with the ICO so that, so that we can raise the fund to deliver the project as we uh, envisage. and. Um, um, I understand at the moment the private sale is running and the price, the the um, entry limit is a bit high. I just talked about the entry limit for the private sale. So because we want more, um, everybody to have access to this project because of the benefit it intends to deliver in the long run, uh, we are looking at bringing down the entry limit to our for accessibility to everyone. Because part of our dream, the part of what we want to offer accessibility is not just meant for a few privileged. So we want it to be accessible for everyone. So um, by Monday, we'll be speaking to the developers to bring down the limit so that everybody can go on and support this project, access and support the project. So in the long run, we can all build Fortified X together. So in the long run, with the support of everyone, I see Fortified X going places and we know we're gonna deliver on our promise and then um, and I'm, again, because of the value it intends to bring, uh, I see um, the public coming to understand um, more about Fortified X and rallying behind Fortified X to come into play to deliver what it intends to deliver. So that is what I see for Fortified X as we speak. That's great. That's great, Dave. I mean, for everyone, uh, do you? Uh, want to invest with fortified or you want to see it grow by standing at the corners that is up to you but it seemingly is a very good project and those who wants to want to really have some benefit of this upcoming market can invest with fortified that is one thing uh another question uh is coming uh, yeah. from one of our viewers they say that how do you plan to spread awareness about your project in different countries so i'll ask this i'll answer this question uh, on your behalf that okay. they've already come to coin cover platform we are already a global platform so they are doing it right now and they might be going to a number of other such platforms which are having different communities spread it across the world so that will be one way second way is that a lot of people are coming joining fortified x for the kind of services the quality of services they are giving and that is going to be the second one please add if i've left something out <laughs> you've, not it. you've not left anything out <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's good, Dave. It was, it's really yeah, good. No, to we, yeah, we even intend to create, um, you know, community, different community. Um, when I say different community, different um, language and, and everything so that people will feel welcome to come and join. But we have plans for that. Um, possibly after the ICU, we're going to do, we, we're going to then do different um, Telegram community so that people can easily go to the community, speak the language that they understand, and at the same time promote the interest of Fortified X. That's great, Seb. Dave, thank you so much for being here. Any closing remarks to our viewers? Any comments that you want to make? Yeah, um, my closing remark is um, the IC is live. Um, by Monday, we're going to drop the entry uh, the entry limit down so that everybody can access Fortified X. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. Join and let's build Fortified X together. Thank you. So that was Dave for you. So Fortified X is a great project and a great product we already have seen during the discussion. And if you want to ride the tide, you can simply participate in their ICO and can, I mean, go along with them for a decent, uh, say, investment with the project. Along with that, if you are not investing in Fortified X right now, you can still 
be a part of their community can wait for other uh, other assignments and you can always use their services because they are a hybrid exchange as dave has already told and there are a lot more other benefits and products coming up in the future so that was dave with us from fortify dax and this is sudeep from coin gubber signing off and we'll keep bringing you more projects of interest and of benefit to the community in the times to come thank you so much everyone bye bye thank you sudeep bye bye thank you